Ronnie Fee, Kiff is in the building. Ronnie Fee, yo, Kiff, can I get my New York Nick Jet? Yo, Ronnie, man, we gotta talk, cause this, you're treating Jada Kids better than me. You're treating it, you know what I mean? You gotta stop, you know, I think. Listen, one thing I never do is I'm so cocky when it comes to the clothes that I never like ask somebody like, yo, when you get it or what you do or whatever the case may be. I seen Jada Kiss with Ronnie at the uh, the Nick game the other day. We was going crazy, jumping up and down, running around. He said he ordered it. <laughs> and Jada Kiss had the flyest New York Nick jacket. So I'm like, yo, Jada, where you get that at? Where you get that? I lost it. It's cream, New so, York. So. And the man said, Ronnie. He put he threw Ronnie under the bus. And then Ronnie was like, no, no, wait a minute. That was the last year's collection. Uh, yeah, I'm like, yo, Ronnie, man, you don't take care of me, man. But the man, you know, the 30th, I'm doing something really big for Ronnie. Holy shit, I better make sure I'm here. <laughs> I better make sure I'm here, Ronnie. And I said, he said, add him to this. Oh, shit. Hold up. Ronnie got the Yankee collection coming out. He got some real Yankee. He got the Yankee. He told me, yo, you really want the Yankee? No, I want the Knicks. This is the first time I'm ever doing this shit. I don't even know how this shit works. <laughs> yo, Ronnie! <laughs> yo. Mr. Kip! You May better be here love. on the 30th. <laughs> May is here. He's my uh, consultant. He sends <laughs> his love. No doubt. Yo, Ronnie, let me tell you something, man. That jacket was so fly. But everything you do... It's fly. I'm not gonna lie to you, Ron. Like Kiff, your brand, uh, it's on another level of excellence. And uh and, and everything you make, I like want it. I'm like, damn, man, I like them shorts. I like this. Um how do you how, how do you so on top of the game with with the clothing and the brand and all that? Because it seems like you one step ahead of everything. It's uh devoting your entire life to some shit. You know how it goes. You know, I could ask you the same shit when you were, you know, and you still are, but when you're making music, you know how it goes. Um, so it's the same thing here. But um, more importantly, <clears throat> you're a fucking legend, and I, pre I always appreciate you for everything that you do. Ronnie, you know the first time I met you? I remember the first time you met me. You came with Pun to the store. On Eighth Street, when I, I was I was fourteen year I was fifth no fifteen years old it was ninety seven or ninety eight I think it was and they made back then there were these uh, Timberland construction boots with a mock toe stitch in the front <laughs> right and 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 you and Pun both bought a pair I remember you guys pulled up it was a crazy no. time. You know, the first time I remember, remember, you knew because I'm a rapper, but I met you at a, at a sandwich stand in Miami. <laughs> in that sandwichery. The sandwichery, the, them motherfuckers, yo, yo, Ron, they make a good sandwich. I need And then me and you was online and we start talking and. I know. We need to buy, can me and you go buy that spot? We need to buy that spot, man. I would love to buy the spot. Yo, yo, Ron, I want to buy everything. I feel you. I feel you. Um, I feel just you. so people know, you started out retail, all this. Now your brand is so global. You got stores in Japan. Japan, Where else? Japan, uh, Paris was the Paris and Hawaii was the last store that we opened. I didn't, but yo, with the lockdown, I didn't even get to see the Japan store. It opened last July, and I haven't been able to. They won't let me in to go, to go even see the store. Imagine. Imagine putting an album together and not even being able to hear it like after you work on it for fucking a year and a half, not being Yo, able that's to. That's fucking nuts, man. It's and terrible. and uh, and with the designing of the uh, of of the stores, because you always got, you know, like the Miami, everything is just fly. L.A. Nah, the designing, who comes up with this? I, I work um I work a lot on the store designs. Like right now on the Hawaii store, I worked on the design solely uh for that shop and then uh for the office for the new office that you gotta come check in uh in Williamsburg. Um I'm I'm doing a lot of I'm doing a I'm doing a lot of designing now when it comes to the architecture and the stores. So 
um, working on that, working on the apparel, working on the footwear. Um, and then, you know, um, the 30th for the, for the footwear news uh, award that actually became public today. It became um, public today, the 30th? Yeah, you know, it's man of the year. They made him man of the year. Of course he is. For footwear. <laughs> of course you are. Uh, of the year. And, and he's going to give away a free tennis court with it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yo, Ronnie Vaughn, <laughs> one week's tennis, one week's basketball. Like, man, you, uh, you've really been giving back to the community. That's, and that's, I think that that's the biggest focus and biggest uh, shift 10 years later, because we turned 10 this year, is understanding the impact of the platform and what we could do uh, to help give back. So we're working right now on a foundation. Um, we already started the foundation, but we're putting the legwork in now for something that's gonna launch in September that I'm really excited about. And it's gonna have to do with education and giving people the ability to learn in our field. So that's gonna be huge. And uh, the, the Kith community portion of what we do, which is black and brown owned businesses, local businesses that we try to highlight and put on the platform. So I'm excited for that as well. Yo, my brother, man, they, are you promising my, my jacket that you- Already, you, it's already ordered. It's coming mid-December, so a month from now, you'll have mid -December. it. Mid-December, God damn, that's the slowest. Yo, <laughs> is it in the bottleneck? Is it on the ships? It's, ha Trying no, it's handmade the in the U.S. It's made in San Francisco. It's handmade, bro. Man, you're so fucking rich, Ronnie. You should have that expedited. <laughs> so fucking quick. Let, let's just hope the fucking Knicks keep winning so you still want to wear the jacket in mid-December. You feel me? My brother, God bless you. I'll see you soon, all right? I love you, Joe. Thanks for coming on, man. man Thanks, brother. Man, that's the Don Coley own. Don Coley own of the retail clothing and sneaker business. I tell them that all the time. You don't have to kill people to be the Don Coley. Yo, he's the Don. Give him that. Give the man that. But damn, the richest guy in the game take a month to get my jacket? <laughs> Shit. Expedite, Ronnie. I'll keep fucking with him. We're going to jump on again. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, What's the T-Bird? What's the T-Bird? Uh, Porter. What is it? Sean Porter. Okay, I fucked up. S H Hang on. I send a request. Yo, Coach your deals. Nick's are winning. Yo, we, we got a big ass TV here. Yo, my brother. Yo, listen, you better than me. You Say know it again. I'm, I'm, I'm like all over the place and then uh, but thanks for showing up, Mr. Porter, man. Thank you for being on a big, big show. You know what you do, man. I've been sitting here just watching. I forgot I was supposed to be on. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know what? You know, the guy, you know, big money came up. You know, I say, hold up, man. I'm hustling him for a jet. I don't care. I'm hustling him. I ain't mad at you. I do the same thing. I look at what other people got on and never walk up to them like, yo, where'd you get that from? I'm just like. Let me do something. You know, I, look, I lost that. my cool. I see yeah. Jacob kiss with the jacket. I was like, I, yo, I swear on everything. I never do that. It's like, yo, you got that shit, yo. Hey, listen, if I do it, now nah, I can't, now nah, I can't go get it. If I say, yo, where you get that from? Now nah, I can't get it. <laughs> Man, let me tell you something. I'll, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's been a lot of boxes turned commentators, which is great for the sport because you got the insight. But I'm not going to lie to you just because you on the show. You might be the best. You might be the best. I'm, I'm be, because your precision and how you talk, man, this guy got to switch it up. You got to switch up the style. Yo, this guy, and, and, and when I'm so engaged, when you're giving that feedback, did you always know you wanted to be a commentator? I did. I always knew I wanted to be in TV. I always knew I wanted to be radio and TV and, and doing doing commentary. Um, I boxed and I played football. And when I wasn't boxing, I was watching football. I watched more football my entire life than I ever did boxing. And so I kind of just listened to those guys do what they did in the, in the on the football side of things mm -hmm. and kind of take that same approach to boxing in terms of how do you how do you deliver something that's exciting that people that people are gonna understand, you know what I mean? So
And of course, I've had uh, amazing people in my in my life to get me uh, further along in this short period of time than most people have. Well, Max is a good friend of mine. Max is a beautiful person. Yeah. No uh, now, the reason why I ask you that, right, is because I've been around so long that I've been able to admire peers from far away. And when I got to get into the studio with them, yeah, right, <laughs> I see their thought process and how they put something together. And it's different than what I don't know why you learn things. But you are in there watching anybody you respect every other week commentating. Do you learn that? Have you picked up on some shit right there that, that it's like, wait a minute, like, it's almost like you in everybody's studio session yeah. commentating. Do you learn a lot from that? How do you not get sharp from that? You know what I'm saying? If you if you if you in the studio with Big and then you in the studio with Pun and then you in the studio with, with Kiss and then you know you in the studio with the locks and the, and the list goes on, how do you not pick up something and or how do you not have the consciousness to say, yo, yo, that was that was fire. I, I need to I need to learn that. That was all right. I think uh, next time I go into the studio, next time I go into the boxing ring, I'm going to use a little bit of what I just saw right there. So it has definitely helped sharpen my skills, both on the commentating side and also from an uh, from an intelli intellectual side in the boxing ring in terms of me being able to think faster and make adjustments and things like that. I'm definitely seeing a difference. And one thing I, I say about boxers all the time is uh, you have to, you don't have this problem. But you have to be versatile, and you have to know to, when to adjust. Sometimes you can stick to the game plan. Yeah. But and when it ain't working by the sixth round, yeah. you got to I seen one fight that Floyd Mayweather was losing six rounds. I forget what it was. Then he came in there and switched the whole shit up. <laughs> and at the end, when he interviewed him, he was like, I was thinking about Jack Dempsey against how he switched it up. And, yeah. you know, a lot of boxers fall in love with one particular style that makes them win. And then whenever that's not working, they don't know how to adjust or they need to adjust. Shout out to Roxy. Yo, Roxy. <laughs> Congratulations on the new show. We love you, Roxy. Roxy Diaz. So uh, how about you? Are you able to make that transition in the middle of the fight and say Yo, maybe I don't need the box. Maybe I need the slug. Maybe I need. Yeah, it, I, it's not easy. Um, and I think the main reason why it's not easy is because the there, there's um what I think a lot of people don't know about boxing is like boxing is like basically based on rhythm, and it's like you can't. I, I, I'll equate it to jazz. I'll equate it to music. Like you can't come into the room playing jazz and then somebody do something different and then you like. I got to play blues. It's not easy to quickly go from jazz to blues. Mm. I, you always have to, you got to, you got to, you got to mold and you got to polish that jazz in the, in the gym. And then while you molding and polishing that jazz, you got to mold and polish that blues. You got to mold and polish that country. You got to mold and polish everything so that when something doesn't, when you hear, and for me in the ring, it's seeing something. When you see something that didn't hit right, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, he trying to play some. Oh, he trying to play some rock. He trying to play some rock. <laughs> oh, he let's, trying let's to do rock this. Out. Let's rock out. You know what I mean? So it's not. It's not easy. You to know, do. I ain't gonna lie. When I go to do a concert, you know, I have my guys look out. It might be an all white crowd. I gotta give them. You know, I gotta do some get it popping, some what's loves. Yeah. I might look and it's a hood, and I gotta come in the hood. You adjust to the crowd. You you adjust uh, to the situation. What and that's you what I do, like, in the boxing ring, I, I do the best I can to make my fighters adjust to me. And there's only been a few instances where you ha I have had to adjust to my fighters, you know what I mean? So I am, like, I, I try to be the DJ from the opening. You know, you duck no one. You duck <laughs> no one. You have serious people you have fought that, you know, other people wouldn't even fight. And then it gets me to thinking of, the last fight that you lost, you was winning the whole shit. You just got too aggressive, right? And, 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 and 
And you're like, tell me about that. You in there with him, it's a fucking battle. Nobody thought you was gonna win. Uh, you was the underdog. And you, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna disrespect, cause I love the boxer too, but you was busting his ass. Yeah. And then he got you, fine. We was prepared to go out there and do everything we did from the opening round, round one, all the way around 12. And then round 11, I think it was, again, talking about that rhythm, with me having so much control and, and moving the way that I was moving, doing everything that I was doing. A lot of times when you have that rhythm and you're in so much control, you may lose track that, that something could happen. And I think I was at a point where I was just rocking and rolling and I was doing my thing. And when I come up for my punch, he's right there with the perfect shot as well. And Cause at what, at, what, at what point, you know, it always got me bad when my favorite boxers were winning and they were smart enough to like coast in the last two, three rounds. And, and, and you wanted to bust his ass. Like, I don't know, man. It, it, uh, it makes expert. sense. Every, every sport does it. Every sport does it where you ice the clock. And I think that even at that point where we're in the 11th round, and you can tell, I think real boxing fans and real true people who know fighting, know boxing, know that I was really controlling that entire fight. Yes. One, if you take a look at the scorecards, it still doesn't say I was going to win the fight even without mm. that knockdown. Mm. And so even in when most sports where you can coast, you got the points on the board. You know what's going on. And boxing is just one of them sports where it's like you really can't take your foot and off. You feel like he got, he's the comeback kid, you, everything, and you just like, yo, I got to put it on. I'm putting it on. I'm not gotta against that. On. Gotta keep I'm, I'm not against that. But it reminds me, uh, what was that fight? Javante was, was, was fighting the Mexican kid. Leo Santa Cruz. Yo, that was a fucking fight, bro. Great fight. No, that was a fucking fight. Great fight. And, and, and then I've known Leo. Leo pulled out that boop, that uppercut. I just barred with him uh, last week. Javante Davis is one of the sharpest boxers I've ever been in the ring with. Sharp. You barred with him to, yeah. to prepare for this fight? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and do you would you spar with somebody who hits that hard? Because Javante looks like he hits hard. Like you gotta do what you gotta do with a guy who just knocks people out. That's fucking nuts. Hey, listen, if you don't face the fire in training, what you gonna do in, in the fight? And the fire come. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we do it. We uh we we try to make it so that we have a couple of fights before fight night, and we try to make fight night as easy as possible. Why not? do a rematch because you had that fight beat why not what what did your people try to get a rematch boxing does not always do what makes sense mm. uh it made sense to do a rematch that fight was at the staples center that fight sold out at the staples it sold very well on tv you do a rematch everything is at least double what, what it was and and when you got the narrative of that first fight to go off of now everything changes. Now this isn't the, oh, Sean's going to get dominated. Oh, Sean's going to get knocked out. It's the, well, who's, who's going to win this one? Is Errol Smith going to land that punch? If Errol Smith doesn't land that punch, that, will he win the fight? Oh, no, you win Sean the fight. Land, well, Sean land the punch. You know I, I mean? love Errol Smith. I just but, think but, that but, it but, got. But you won that fight other than you got a little greedy. Your hand was in the, um, in the cookie jar. And, and and I see somebody said Joe don't disrespect. I love Errol Spence. I love his story. I love that he's a, a, a nice person. You know, I, but you know, you had the fight. I'm not trying to start no shit at concert. You had the fight. You know, you you went in there and and you was almost pulling it off. You got to uh, the hand in the cookie jar. Yeah. <laughs> so with this one, you know, uh, we're looking at Terrence Crawford, and he's a sharp fighter. It's about knowing when to go into that cookie jar and, and knowing when to when to go sit down. You know what I mean? <laughs> and let me tell you something. This guy, he ain't no punk. This guy's incredible. That's why I say you duck no one. Yeah. I see a lot of fighters. They fight different fighters. They ain't the you. You know, you really go. You really, you really fight the best, the top of the. Is that something that you make you you tell your team? I want to fight the best. Nah, man, I'm a, um, I'm cause, cause you, cause you fat Joe and cause you do music. I'm gonna keep riding on that, on that analogy of music. But 
it's like every every album you put out, you try to make that album a hit. Mm. You try to make it so that everybody remember at least a couple of joints on that on that on that album, and and people was looking forward to the next album. Now, why would I regress and do anything different but try to fight the best? And so it's really not a situation where I'm telling my team like, okay, he's the best, go get him. He's the best, go get him. It's just about me saying I'm not willing to fight anybody that's less than me. And if anything, I want to fight something that other people would consider more than me. You know what I mean? So I'm. You know, boxing is the only sport that you have one loss and then that's it. He's whack. He fell off. He's, I've never seen no shit like. You win 33 and 0, take one L, and then yo, it's over. This, I mean, why is there so much pressure on boxes in that way where, where one loss, you know, one loss is like, they, it, it's almost like you're destroyed. Like, when you lost, you've been, you've been studying boxing your whole life. When you lost your first fight, you felt like the, the end of the earth. Uh, when I lost my first fight, I was down, man. I was uh, just a little. Um, I was like, in, I was in a place where I was kind of uh, really sad, and you know, didn't want to talk to nobody, didn't want to see anybody. And my dad came to me. He said, "Man, listen." He says, uh, you, "You're gonna come back from this. You just gotta get back moving, get back, get back training, and we'll figure out the next step to take and get you back to where you were." And uh, when my dad told me that, I held on to that, and um, you know, I never looked back. What's this fight looking like? Because that's why I hit you up. I love this fight. What's the game plan? Are you going to be victorious? You know, this is it's a big it's a big fight for you, man. It's yeah. a big fight. This is uh this is basically what I've been working my whole life for. Uh I've been here before. Um and I have another opportunity to do it again. Um, I'm a two-time world champion, and so I'm going against a guy who is a uh, three-time, uh, or not three-time, but a three-division world champion. He's, he's taking on 135, 140, and now 147. So, you know, on paper, the fight is, is fantastic. If you take a look at me, the things I've done in the ring, especially against the best, you know I do not uh, disappoint. And when you take a look at him and everything that he's done, he's nothing but dominant, you know what I mean? So... Uh, it's the, the the collision course is, has has come and and um, you know outside of it being exciting, um, I'm gonna tell everybody not to miss a second of this. Uh, I, I, now everybody, I, this, this, this this if you love boxing, shout out my brother Pat Pucci just picked you up. If you love boxing, you gotta get this one. You you this gotta one. watch this fight. Like this the what one. are you on drugs if you don't watch this fight? You you you, you thought that that uh that Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder was the one. It, and it it was amazing, but this one this one has elements that that fight didn't have. So, yeah. man, big up to both of them. You know guys. what I learned? I'm gonna tell you something. I was talking to this trainer, right? She's cop diesel and shit, <laughs> and you know, like cop D. She don't play that shit. She like a Comanche Indian. Indian. She's cop. So I said, let me ask you something, right? I said, I told you about this shit today. So I said, I was talking about Tyson Fury and Wilder. And she said, listen, Joe, a lot of those guys that got six packs and like that, it's in their DNA. It's in their, they, like, they got that in their genes to get the six pack. She said, Tyson Fury, is really cop diesel under that wobbly body. He hits hard. It's just the way God made him. He can't. Yeah. I didn't understand that. I didn't realize. Stay right here in case of uh, call Rich in case they, they don't hear us. You're growing low flat. I did Thank you, my brother. Yes, yeah, Chef Mark. What, what did you make tonight, Chef Mark? Grilled low-fat lasagna. Grilled low How could you do a grilled low-fat lasagna? Like low cottage cheese? Low, low cottage cheese, low fresh mozzarella, uh, and the pasta is like, you know, the leanest pasta. Very, very paper thin. I think I'm, he's I'm on the, the shit. I'm on the right call right now because that's what I eat after my weigh-in. I eat lasagna. So 
We're going to do love. Yeah, we got you. love you, Chef. Love you too. Yeah. Yo, let me tell you, so you can't wait till you're waiting so you can eat some low-fat, <laughs> sugar-free pasta. Huh? Right, you're right. You're going to fuck so full of shit. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot. Yeah, his lasagna and shit. I'm he going talking for about it. his vegetarian. I'm like, okay, Chef. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that shit so tastes fact, good. You thought, you, you thought the bigger the muscles, the better the fighter? Yeah, I thought, like... I, like, cause if you look at, if you put him on a lineup and you see Wilder, Cock, Diesel, of course, and you see Fury, you know, like Fat Joe body, a little yeah. more in shape, yeah, you thinking one million percent. If if you ain't the the analyst like you, yeah, of a fight, you would think definitely the so Corvette versus the Jeep. What happened? I said it's a Corvette versus a Jeep. You're looking at a Corvette sit, sit, standing next to a, sitting next to a Jeep. Yeah, so you sitting there and you like, no way this guy can win. But yeah. this guy not only has his number, he hits hard as fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's and the so, heavyweight division. That that division, man, you can't you can't measure that power. You know the trainer told me, listen, he got muscles. It's just not the way you see it. His yeah. body doesn't allow him to be six packed up and all that. Well, yeah. obviously, he got power. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he got power. He got the skills. He got everything you need to be, you know, every everything that he is right now to the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? Let's say you win this fight. Who's your dream matchup? Who do you think, right, is, and I'm not looking past this fight. Let's just say, God willing, you win the fight, right? Let's just say, right? If you had a choice. What's the biggest bag for you? What is it? Floyd Mayweather coming back? Is it, I'm talking about some crazy shit. Where hey, if you could pull off, I'm not saying, I don't want to put that in your mind. But if right. you could, what's the fight you think could be the one must see everybody got to go to Vegas as crazy as this is that? Everybody be here this weekend. Oh, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Walking in the ring, you look to the side. Mike Tyson is in the audience. Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley's in the audience. Everybody's out there. What the fuck is that like for you? Love it. Never, never, um, never, never knew that was coming. You know what I mean? And I and I love it. My whole thing when I come out and you what you replay any fight when you see me walk out, I'm looking in the stands like it's gotta be full. Wherever I fight, I need all eyes on. So you you can play like any fight of me right now. You, when you see me walk out, you see me looking up. If the stands is full, I'm about to show off. I love it. And that's what makes you you. And that's what makes champions champions. Yeah. Because a lot of people look like they champions. Yeah. But they fold to the bright lights. That's why a lot of players that play basketball are scared to come to play for the Knicks because they don't want that media scrutiny. Yeah. I'm the difference. Yeah. Yeah. I want the shit. Yeah, yeah. I want the smoke. I want to be there. I want to show you how great I am. I want the legacy. I'm different, and 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 that's what makes you a champion. You walking up in there like everybody's watching me. It's time to put on a fucking show. I've been like that my whole life. I don't know why. You know, I'm, I'm very humble outside of the rings. I was at a gym yesterday, and there's somebody said somebody walked up and asked for a picture. And a gentleman had been sitting down, and he was trying to strike a conversation. He says, oh, well, you must be famous. I said, not really. I don't, I don't, but on fight night, everybody I am. And everybody needs to know as soon as I step in the ring. I love it. You know, it's a boxing culture, right? Prize fighting, boxing culture. There's nothing like that. And it's like, when you come, you know, I did a versus, right? I did the versus against Ja Rule. Yeah. And let me tell you something. It's the closest thing to fight night. <laughs> I, I'm no bullshit. And, you know, I watched a couple of other guys who did versus say the same shit. They were like, yo, this was like a boxing match. This was like, because you fight for your legacy. Yeah. The people were hyping you up. Yeah. I was in a, a building, Uncle Dan's building. When I came down, the doorman was just like, get him, crap. Get him. I pulled up to the light. The FedEx guy was like, get him, crap. I pulled up to the next light.
and a lady of crossing guard. Get them, Joe. I'm fucking psyched. Yeah. Like, I don't want to fucking talk to nobody. Yeah. I mean, if I could do it again, or I could give some type of uh, uh, consulting to somebody else, I would say relax. Yeah. I would say relax, chill, enjoy it, because yeah. I was on some bullshit. It's the closest thing to being... How do you feel when you go into the stadium? You, How do you feel? Well, let me ask you. Like you, you've done battle raps before, right? It was like, was yes. that different? Was that different from a battle rap? Was the yeah, it's different because uh, this one is legacy against legacy. Yeah, and not only that, this is prime time. This yeah. is two million people watching on Instagram. Yeah, this shit, you know, and you know, you see, this is what I mean when I say you pick your opponents. You don't duck nobody. You want it to be the biggest show. Right. Me, I picked Ja Rule. Yeah. I know you could only play 20 songs. The man got 17 number ones. <laughs> like, you got to be out of your fucking mind to go up against this guy. Right? But I knew it was going to be must-see TV. Right, right. Prime time. Let's do our shit. Right. But, um... That's my thing. I mean, like, you you got you got Pepsi behind you. Um, My whole thing is if Aerosmith Jr., that's a Super Bowl fight. Keith Thurman, that's a Super Bowl fight. Danny Garcia, that's a Super Bowl fight. You, there's Ugas. This, I've been to Super Bowl fights. Like, why would I Why would I go back to trying to play in a playoff game? Uh, 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 yeah, I get it. I get it. Yo, listen, listen. Keith Thurman, yo, I thought he was the truth of all truths. Yeah. What, he, 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 he calmed down a little or something? I, I think, you know, um... It's it's a part of the game. I think um, the game, if you if you don't treat it the way it needs to be treated, and if you don't do all the right things, I think that it's gonna pull something from you. They this is what they say. They say every time you go in the ring, you leave a piece of you in the ring. And I do believe that to be true. I think that that we do at some point we get hurt. Something happens at some point physically where we just don't leave the ring the same. But if we leave the ring, we take care of our body. We do our icing. We do our soaking. We do our lab and, and so on and so forth, and we build our body back up to where, where it needs to be, then we can perform again, you know? And I think that that's why I've been able to have so many big performances, because I take care of my body, do my training, I do my, my nutrition, the whole nine. I think that other guys can be looking and they're like, man, I have that stuff right now. I'm not trying to do that. I got to, I got to, that guy, I don't want to do it. And I think a lot, like, uh, but people don't understand. It's a little different with somebody sticking a jab in your face for twelve fucking rounds. Yeah, yeah. And you keep bang, bang, bang. I got my, I got. So this is the Port Away podcast. I got my own podcast. We are. See, I think we're sixty episodes in. We started during the pandemic. My thing with my podcast is, yeah, I want you to get clued into what goes on in the locker room. I want you into when the ref made the wrong decision and what he should have done. I want to give people that look that they don't really get into boxing. I've had, have, and I, and I, and I can deliver it. But the other podcast, I, I want people to be empathy and more understanding to fighters and to the fight game. Y'all are like, man, he quit too. Y'all don't know what it took for him to get there. I'm talking about him quitting on the Oh, uh, he could fight another round. You go out there and fight. And rounds you want to go. You know what I mean? So I think on one side of it, yes, we're supposed to be warriors. Yes, we're supposed to show everything we have internally, externally. And I, I, right, Keith Thurman at one point, he was the boogeyman. But at some point, you have to separate yourself and show that you are the guy. And I've been able to do everything that I, that is. We fought in 2016. I'm still fighting here, just below me. I don't get him back here, but you know, with, with my podcast, I want to to other fighters that are coming up to be here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, you're going in and out. The mic is popping in and out. I don't know why, but uh, you know, Keith Thurman, uh. 
And what I'm going to say is, is, is not the right way to say it, but it, it, it's definitely not the I don't even think I can say it. Forget it. Um, it was like, you know when you fought those guys that didn't even know their own power? Like, what they, is it offensive saying, like, brute strength? No, brute strength is not. Like, this guy, I used to look at him like, he makes no sense. You know what? Keith had, has, Keith has, he's got that power that you are flat out just born with. It's the same thing with Deontay Wilder. That's what Keith has. Keith was knocking out guys in tournaments when we were 14, 15 years old. How do I know? Because I was like one of the only other guys out there. Doing it. I had, I had man strength at a young age. Keith had real godly given strength his entire life. And so he, like you said, like guys that don't know their own power. That's who he was. And I think who he still is. I just think that you know, just got to get back out there and start doing it more. Yes, you know, he he, he got to get fo focused. I would love to see him. Your top five of all time, dead or alive, boxes. Mm. My number one is Marvin Hagler. Ooh, marvelous Marvin Hagler. He's my number one. Greatest chin in boxing. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, of course, Muhammad Ali. Um, I can't hear you, my brother. Good. All right, you back, right? Because, you know, they know you're on live with Fat Joe, the biggest show they want to call you. <laughs> I know these clout chases, man. Tell them to relax, man. So I'm you using, said... The funny thing, I'm using my wife's phone, so they calling her. Thinking, oh, so that's like, hey, girlfriend. Yeah. You know, you got to... Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Number two, innovative in the ring. And Muhammad out. Ali, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Roy Jones Jr. Ooh, number three. You know, he came to beat me up. Yeah, I know the boxing world must know. Because, you know, I said in New York, I said even Roy Jones was forced to lean back in the uh, store in New York. He literally came to beat me up. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. I, I had 100 guys with me. Yeah. I walk backstage. Yeah. I have no clue he's in there. I pull the curtain. It's Roy Jones Jr. with like eight guys. And he's like, yo, what's up with that song? And he got that face. This is when Roy Jones was knocking people. So I come up on him so fast, I grab his wrist. Yeah. So he won't let him fly. Because I know he could touch me and I get knocked out. So I'm grabbing his wrist. Like, yo, can't. He got the guy, chopper style, chopper, chopper, chopper style. Yeah. He behind him, he going, yo, give it to him, champ. Knock him out. I'm like, oh, motherfucker. But you know, I ain't want to excite the, the oh, I, I wanted to calm this down. I'm looking at him like, oh, my God. And so, long story short, I try to talk him out of, you know, the guy, he came to knock me out, Roy Jones Jr. in New York. I had 100 guys on the side. So then I had to, finally, I started feeling like pussy, like a punk. Yeah. And, and I just let his hands go and say, you know what, champ? You know, you're going to knock me out, champ. But those guys over there, they're not going to want to fight you one-on-one, -on -one, champ. Yeah. And he looks over there, and I'm like, yeah, the 100 guys, champ. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to let you get out of here, man. Yeah. And he looked at me and said, so it's just hip-hop? I said, no, it's just hip-hop. I'm sorry, Chad. Yeah. But he came to knock me out. That's yeah. a real story. I don't give a damn what you say. If I heard my name in the song, I'd be like, oh. <laughs> and it was a number one song. And it was a number one hit. And so you got three. You got Roy Jones. You got Marvelous Agler. You got Muhammad Ali. Julio Cesar Chavez. Ooh, Julio Cesar Chavez, he fucked up so many Puerto Rican fighters, man. Like, let me tell you something. This is how I knew Dominicans, and I love my Dominican people. Yeah. This is how I knew Dominicans was hating on Puerto Ricans, right? Right. Because anytime Chavez, you know, back in the days, we would go see the fight in like a club. 
Yeah. Like, it would be like a fucking nightclub, the big right. fight. And so if it was Camacho against Julio C, whatever. Man, I'm thinking Julio C is Mexican from the West Coast. And I'm thinking at least the Dominicans that have the Puerto Ricans backs because they next door neighbors. Right. The whole yeah. Dominican crowd go against the Puerto Rican guy. I'm like, man, this <laughs> motherfucker hating in this motherfucker right here. Like it was. They knew what it was. They knew what it was. Let me tell you some Julio Cesar Chavez, man. That's a fucking like that man was it's a that great. man was so tough. Yeah. Who else? Who's your last one? Floyd. Oof. Hey, listen, listen. Nobody comes into the game one way and then be because of certain things says I have to fight a different way. Decides to fight a different way and it's and it's is it's as dominant that a, a completely version of himself, but still as dominant. That'll never happen again. And he did it his way. He's like Frank Sinatra. He did it his way. It is his way. You know what I'm saying? And now every every year come fuck somebody up for a little hundred million to jump out. Right. I, I get scared and I love the champ. I get scared every time the champ do that shit. Yeah. Because yeah. boxing you know, I tell everybody all the time, I say, you know what? We can have you boxing, you can have the fancy cars, the jury, the 100 guys that you, but when you walk in that ring, you walk in that ring alone, Poppy. Yeah. And, and you know, I had a uh I had a time like that, right? Uh this is crazy, and, and, and this is crazy. This is a joke for a moment, but it was the MTV Awards. I was supposed to present an award to Missy, right? And so I get there, and when they announced me to go, this is the time I had beef with 50 Cent, like mm. real fucking beef with 50 Cent, right? And we seen each other, we was kind of... And uh, so it's a long stage, like a long thing to get to where I present the award. When they say my name, I think 50 ain't know I was going to be there. So he gets up and he starts looking around like wrestling. Like there's no bullshit. Like, you know how Macho Camacho on the, I mean, um, um, the host that used to be like, he's like, where he at? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like looking around. Like this is fucking WWE, right? Yeah. But then... I don't know if people, he jumps over the thing and then he's like, wait, I'm supposed to present the award. Yeah. Wait, so no. I looked to the side, Jay-Z was there, Jeezy, a bunch of people. It was on TV. Yeah. So as I'm walking, I tell myself, I right, jump, it's going to go down. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Yo, I'm diddy bopping. Like I'm like I'm walking towards the, the like I'm like, yo, all right, we're gonna get it on, boy, in front of them. So you know how you feel when you walk in? Yeah. I felt like everybody's here. We gonna get it on in front of everybody. Uh, right? And the then they they somehow they pushed him off the stage, like security was like, yo, or something. He disappeared. Yeah. But I really thought. It was going down in front of TV, 30,000 people. Yeah. And then when I got off the stage, these FBI guys came up and they had a, uh, thank God they did that. 50, my brother, they pulled out. A, if you ever see an FBI guy show you like the badge, you know how the cops show you the badge? TV. The FBI guy, his shit this big. Dang. No, his shit fold out. Yeah. And they're like, get the fuck out of here. Do you know who's in here? And I'm like, and it was like, George Bush's daughters are in here. Like, they start naming, like, they escorted me to the door and wow. got me the fuck up out the building. MTV had uh -huh. fucked with me for about three, four years after that. Oh, that's, that's when I had, was on the mic and I... And then I had dissed them. I had said, oh, yo, you. thank you for your security. And like, you know, I went bad. Yeah. And, and uh, it shook the walls. I mean, nobody ever seen yeah. nobody go bad on 50 Cent in front of everybody. And yeah. 
So MTV banned me for like three, four years. Uh, Shout uh, out MTV. But at that moment, I felt like the Prince on uh, my, what, what's my man, the Prince, what? Not, uh, Prince, Prince, I see my man. Yeah. I was floating in the carpet. I felt like the Prince, God damn it. I was like, oh shit, it's you going down. Ass, he was a big ass Prince. <laughs> no, I was the biggest Prince. <laughs> man. That shit, like the wind, the wind came up in me and I was like, oh, it's going down yeah. right now. But thank God, they stopped it. And uh, yo, but that shit crazy though, man. That's it. It's uh, it's it's one of the best parts of the night. Um, when you when you when you walk out, I got some special for this walkout. It's gonna be crazy. I know you you particularly you gonna you gonna enjoy this one. I am, but let me ask you a question. Have you ever looked at one of them girls ever distracted? There's a question I wanted to ask every boxer in the world. Yeah. You're fighting. Everybody's all over. They be having some bad joints with that round two, yeah. round three. I've always wondered if you're a horny boxer. Because apparently, listen, apparently you haven't had sex, right? Because because in boxes, you can't have sex to have all your power. You in the ring, and this bad joint is walking around round three. Round, do you ever take a peek? Listen, or, I've been doing this forever, like literally forever. I remember the first time I went to a fight show, and they had ring car girls. I was young. I was a teenager. And I thought that I was supposed to look at them when they walked around. I'm, I'm in the ring doing my thing, and now I'm like literally waiting on her to she came around, came and went. It was like, oh, okay, that's that's it. It it don't. It's nothing. It's a part of the show. It's for the fans. It's for it's for the the crowd, the fighters. Man, we be so focused on our job. We don't got yeah. time for that. But I would I, expect you. I would expect you to answer like that on your wife's phone. Very skilled commentation. <laughs> Woo! Hey, the Woo! She's, she's watching on another on another. Oh, you better fucking oh. believe it. And her cousin is no, watching. But, and afraid now you you you, no, you answered professionally. Though, I'm gonna keep it real. This is actually the first time that I have lost my sexual like appetite before a match. I've never not like not been horny and things like like I'm not. But first, what I'm saying to you is, hold up, man, don't fuck it up. You was, you was pitching the shutout. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You get really excited. You just got to be focused for the fight. Um, Is it true that you can't have sex before uh, a fight? It's not suggested? Or is that like a myth? So I, that's why I thought you was going with this. Like a lot of people are like, oh, man, uh, you can't have sex before the fight. Da, 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 da. Basically, sci sci from, a, from, from a scientific standpoint, you have... Um, uh, what is that? Uh, testosterone in 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 the in the release, and you need your testosterone for the fight. And so that's, oh. why, that's why I say you know no no sex no, no nothing extra before a match. But my my wife's beautiful. Like I was looking at her the other day. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. We no, know she's here. I'm not even, yeah. saying, I'm not even saying this because we because we because I know she might be watching. But she, I just got home. She had taken a shower was sitting there in her towel, and I'm just like, it's just like like another day. Like, any other day, it, it go down. It, it, yeah, it, I'm going to take you down. It I'm goes down. I don't down. know what's wrong with me. <laughs> but I do. I think that it's, I think it's the moment. I think that it is. And it's it, routine, and you know what's best for you. Yeah, yeah. Because, no, real talk, she's in the towel when I came home, and it was just like, hey, love, hey, what's up? Like, it was nothing extra. And this is the first time she 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 watching like yeah this is the first time what's going on <laughs> you know now yeah. you really want to win this fight and yeah. she got to know that that's your your bread and butter yeah yeah you know what I mean this is this yep. is like you know sometimes man let's leave the woman alone out of this because we're going yeah. to some whole other shit <laughs> let me tell you something we all be in trouble trouble it be the rappers that get you in trouble yo it do it do um. Uh, Saturday, how can we watch the fight? How can we order the fight? What we got to do? Because we all want to support you, brother. 
It's the ESPN Plus app. This fight is on ESPN Plus. And from there, you can order it. Um, you should be able to see it on your, on your direct. We got ESPN Plus, right? Guides and all that kind of stuff. You just order this fight, man. Um, I'm really not. Because I hate that new shit. Canelo be doing some shit. Like, huh? The zone and all that. Like, I'm like, bro, I want to watch the fight. Yeah. yeah. I know business is business, but I want to watch. It's Saturday night. Yeah. It's on. I just like, want to turn it on. I don't want to do no extra stuff to get to it. I just want to turn it on. It shouldn't be no problem. I just want to turn the shit on yes, and yes. let's go. And go for it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, if I was a betting man, you would tell me to bet on you? Oh, 100%. One hundred percent. I'm gonna bet on you. Yeah, 100%. and I'm not even a gambler like that, but I'm gonna bet on you, man. Yeah, I'm gonna bet on you because the conviction. You know what I'm saying? I know you don't lie, man. I know you don't lie. I'm gonna have to bet on you, man. Let me tell you something. And speaking of betting, shout out my brother Jay Z. Uh, Jay Z trying to become the first black owner of a casino. First black owner of online betting. And you think about your moms, your aunt, how many black and brown people go bet all the time. And finally, we can have one that looked like us and grew up like us that can own a casino or online betting. It's very, very important that he succeeds because it's almost, and don't want to compare them, but it's almost like I watched Master P do an interview and say, Man, we've been buying so much oodles and noodles and cups and noodles that we never had a black guy own the oodles and noodles. So he starts selling ramen noodles. Mm. And this is the time of black and brown ownership. Yeah. Equity. Yeah. Equity mean a piece of something yeah. rather than just get paid for your services. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very, very important, my brother. God bless you. Good luck. I'm tuned in on, on, on Saturday. Everybody tune in to ESPN Plus. We will talk about it again. All right, my brother, thank you so much. I got to ask you real quick. The picture that I had posted back in the day of my son, did you did you look at that and we was like, what did you, like, what did you think when you saw that picture? I, I don't know exactly what picture you're talking about. I, I did a, uh, it was a picture of my baby. And I said, my, my son used to look like Fat Joe when he was, when he was a baby. <laughs> Yeah. You know, there's a lot of babies look like Fat Joe. They're not mine, <laughs> but there's a lot of, you know, uh, you know, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, you know, Halloween, these kids send me a bunch of pictures looking like Fat Joe. Like, yeah. you know, dressing like Fat Joe, painting beards on, splattering, man. It's beautiful, my brother. Um, God bless, man. Much success. Uh, I want you to get through this and so we can go back to the fight you lost. I think we deserve, as fight fans, a part two of this shit. And, and so and, and you both deserve that payday. God bless you, my brother. All right, Peace, now. Man. Appreciate Dang, you. Man. What a classy guy, bro. What a fucking classy guy. You don't know who I know. And every time you pick up this fucking IG, somebody spectacular comes on. For free. Shout out to Cash App, who sponsored this show. Cash App gave so much fucking money. The other day, to, you know, Cash App is more than just sending a girl some money. It's stocks. It's Bitcoin. It's, it's crypto. Right? It's crypto. Stock. It's crypto. And so if you wanted to learn about stock, and so we gave people a bunch of $100, $20, $40, $50 of stock. And if anybody, i seen one guy, I know you're cloud chasing, but anybody, you know, said Fat Joe broke, like you are not seeing the one pointers on it. You're not seeing the pointers, you're not. You're not seeing that shit now. Like, you got me all the way fucked up. So how could you do that and lie to yourself? But you got me to talk about it, huh? I guess he did his job. That's what trolling is all about. Put some fire signs if you got some money in the stocks.
It's not every day. It's going to happen again. It's not today. So don't flood my comments with your, your cash app shit. Yo, Pat Poos, these guys have got to be fucking dizzy or something. Or they must not see the fucking diamonds on this shit. Or the shit on this. Like, man, you talk about people that their, their heart is in hate. Their nature, their DNA, their DNA is, I want to hate. Because you cannot lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. I mean, you got to be really realistic about this. Maybe you don't have Instagram or you don't follow me because, goddamn, I've been shitting in the highest rate. I don't know what else to do. You want me to hang off a, a platinum uh, uh, helicopter throwing money out? I don't know what else to do. We just gave. We just gave a bunch of money in stock this week coming up. My three up and YC stores, we sitting 18 wheelers in front of each store and give back to the people. We do it every year. Turkey, soup, spaghetti, rice, everything in the bag, not just turkey, everything in the bag. Nobody gives us the money. We put this up ourselves. I put this up myself. Nobody sponsors when we give back to the people. Okay? I mean, we ain't 